Hello gang, this is Elijah Henderson with the Cryptid Studies Institute, and I sincerely hope that you've been enjoying our weekly uploads from our book series, Tales from the Holler. And if by chance you're new to the channel, and you're unaware of it, that is exactly, it is a collection of short stories that were originally intended to be released as a series of books that my dad, Johnny Henderson, and my sister, Gabrielle Henderson, have been writing for the past few years which are best described as a gory, twisted version of Dr. Seuss. Many of the stories are loosely based on tales of cryptids and creatures that my dad grew up hearing about in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, such as Sasquatch or Bloody Bones and Rawhead. However, not all the stories are based on Appalachian lore. Some of the stories are inspired by their love of the great universal movie monsters, such as Frankenstein, the Wolfman, and Dracula and even the modern classic movie monsters like Gremlins, The Fog, or Halloween. It is a virtual cornucopia of twisted inspiration and fun that we are uploading weekly as a thank you to the viewer and fans of the channel for all the love and kindness that you've shown us here and all across social media. And we really can't thank you enough for all that you do. So you get to preview the stories before we self-publish later in the year, now that we finally got the copyright back. And just as a brief disclaimer, these are not true stories in any stretch of the imagination. They are a work of fiction meant to provide simple entertainment. And I want to make that clear because I don't want it to be misconstrued as a true story, although I believe it would be extremely difficult to believe that it is true. Anyway though, I've rambled enough. Enjoy the second chapter of Tales from the Holler. The story I'm telling is true, everybody. I've seen it firsthand with my friend Sheila Dottie. We are out in the patch where the pumpkins was growing, and the big autumn moon in the sky was a-glowing. But it wasn't yeller, instead bloody red. That's why we calls it the dusk of the dead. With that big bloody moon came a night full of frights, filled with shambling corpses and rotten mouth bites. But let me go back and begin from the start, and brace yourself, friend, if you're faintish of heart. Like I said, me and Sheila was in the patch picking pumpkins, for pies, jackie lanterns, and pumpkin spice dumplings. When all of a sudden we heard a strange groan, then a gurgly gasp and a low wailing moan. Then there on the wind a skunky rot smell, and my friend Sheila Dottie said, This doesn't bode well. Then out of the patch we saw the horde coming. Some were a-chewing and others were gumming. Munching on ears and fingers and toes. Some swallowed lips, one gobbled a nose. What could they be, I asked Sheila Dottie, as they shambled about with their old rotten bodies. I think they are zombies, she responded with dread. Come back to feed, they're the hungry undead. In the crimson red moonlight, the cadaver's fiends lurched and they staggered through forest and stream. In creeks, fields, and hollers, they ambled about, some missing arms or their legs or their snouts. Run, shouted Sheila, let's get to the barn. We'll lock ourselves in where they can't do us harm. Off like a shot, we ran across the field, dodging a neighbor, now a zombie, named Neil. The flesh-hungry mob, now grew by the dozens, made up of neighbors and uncles and cousins. Mr. Magruder, whom no one adored, was biting off pieces of Alice McCord. He was shoveling chunks of her into his gullet, till from out of nowhere his head cut a bullet. It popped like a tick that had feasted too long, and sprayed blackish blood on my bib overalls. Sheila and I just knew we were through, when a voice shouted, Over here, now both of you. Off to our left stood my great-uncle Gene, along with the town jodel champ named McSween. We followed them past the old pond by the tractor, but the blood in my eyes was becoming a factor. I was running around as blind as a bat, when I heard someone scream like an old scalded cat. Wiping my eyes on my new flannel shirt that I wear only for courting or going to church. A few yards ahead, I saw a grim sight, a murderous horde in the scarlet moonlight. Next to our house, the carnivorous ghouls were making a meal of my third cousin Jules. They were going to town on her wet, gooey innards that smacked when they slurped them like a sick noodle dinner. Our neighbors and friends, still alive, all converged on our farm in an attempt to survive this great purge. They arrived packed in trucks and in cars on that night. I even saw one try to make it by bike. The bicycle girl was torn clean in two. I think her name was Melissa, or maybe just Sue. My uncle, Mick Swain, and the girl Sheila Dottie, along with myself, tried to outrun the bodies of the recently dead and the rotten cadavers, 
who scurried toward us with a clumsy gate stagger. The rest of the living who had merged on our farm assembled with us in our big wooden barn. In hope of evading this apocalypse brewing, hid in the stalls where the horses got shoeing. The massive wood doors were fastened securely, but without stood the dead, and we knew that surely they would be waiting like a dog for a treat to rend from our bones the gristling meat. The malodorous dead scrabbled about, themselves wanting in or for us to come out. Throughout the night, they pushed, banged, and moaned, and just before dawn, the door gave a groan. With a thunderous crash, the doors broke asunder, and in spilled the dead with their murderous hunger. Swarming like ants at a picnic they came, to feast on the living and gobble up brains. They ripped and they tore, they shredded and chewed, we fought and we hacked, we hammered and hewed. The last of the living fought the putrescent dead, till the red autumn moon turned to pink as it set. With the first rays of sun, the dead suddenly stopped. They twitched a few times and then all of them dropped. We looked at each other, and then at the dead, who moments ago tried to feast on our heads. Not a one of them moved, they were lying quite still, no longer trying to maim, eat, or kill. I walked from the barn stepping over the bodies with McSween, Uncle Jean, and my friend Sheila Dottie. Those that remained alive and still breathing were coughing and puking and gagging and heaving. For wherever they looked on the farm thereabout, there were bodies and blood and entrails pulled out, livers and spleens and hearts torn asunder from the cannibal dead and their flesh-rending plunder. None of us knew why the dead chose to rise to make gory snacks of we the alive. We only know that now every year, when the pumpkins are growing, we live with the fear that the big autumn moon will turn bloody red and we'll have to endure another dusk of the dead.